Okay, so let's recap, shall we? Ahsoka, the show, the character, the legacy that was going to save Disney Star Wars. <laughs> no. Right, so obviously that didn't happen, even though that's not solely on the shoulders of Ahsoka. Just like how it wasn't solely on the shoulders of the process screen vomit that came before it with the Book of Boba T, Mando and Friends, Fraud, Kenobi, and Andor. Still haven't seen that yet. It's more on the grounds that you just literally can't bring a corpse back to life. It's impossible. Much like the impossibility of Disney, Dave Filoni, or that sloppy fucking omelet making competent business decisions or having a sound structure internally, or having a semblance of long-term planning for the franchise that they spent $4 billion on. And while it's pretty obvious that if you gave an actual Star Wars fan with a fourth grade education and background in storytelling, they could have crafted a more cohesive, cinematic, and small screen expansion. The fact of the matter is, is that I mentioned towards the end of my last video that I had an idea, an epiphany, if you will, that I think could have not only capitalized on everything that Disney, the studio, the franchise, and Dave Filoni so desperately need to claw at and strive to achieve, but an idea. A missed opportunity of such monumental proportions that could have elevated the stakes, interest, and fan investment of a vision that if executed with more craft and grace than its initial launch, could have actually saved Star Wars. And you can read it in the title of this video. The Soka Show should have been a movie. Let me explain. While it is definitely no secret that I believe the Ahsoka Show is a show of setups and fan service, never rising to the occasion of the highest point of the Disney Star Wars era, but never falling to the lowest points either. A mismanaged show of wasted potential, missed opportunities, bland acting, half-assed choreography, buffoon activity, a lot of member berries. But yet again, if you squint hard enough and have faith, there is a touch of brilliance and a sense of direction that the Star Wars franchise desperately needs right now. And don't get me wrong, I'm not going to lay out all of the missteps that Disney's Lucasfilm has taken with the direction of Star Wars, not only with the legacy characters they've inherited, but the new original characters they've created and introduced. Pretty much setting up for failure and destroying the careers of two young up-and-coming actors for the shitty dialogue choices and lack of character depth or writing to be carried out on screen. As well as creating a hellhole and a divide within the fandom on the use or overuse of Anakin Skywalker or Darth Vader respectively. If you create and introduce characters that don't resonate with its fandom, therefore manifesting a lack of faith within the studio while simultaneously dealing with a fan hatred towards those said characters, what is a franchise supposed to do? Yes, I know, that's not our fault as an audience, the paying customers and fandom. It's not our fault they had no plan, direction, vision, or intellect. That is our reality. And the reason why member berries run amok like wild Pokemon in the majority of Star Wars' recent projects. Yeah, so it's no question that the sequel trilogy destroyed the Star Wars franchise, not only creating a new path of the idea of success in the eyes of buffoons, money-making strategies when it comes to theatrical releases of a trilogy, by profiting less and less at the box office with each release. Not only that, but took pleasure in deliberately dividing a multi-generational fandom for the sake of, I don't even know, the funnies, I guess? But at the end of the day, there's no denying the initial excitement from even the most jaded of Star Wars fans when it came to the announcement of the Ahsoka show. With the combination of Ahsoka's first live-action appearance in The Mandalorian Season 2, and the fan-favorite character she already was, and the potential of her character introduction into live-action Star Wars could entail was pretty epic. And for some of those reasons alone, the timing simply couldn't have been better for Lucasfilm. In a time where there is 
no plan on continuing the stories of the sequel trilogy. I'm not taking that Ray movie seriously until next year when Disney announces their new or returning head of the snake. But my God, if Kathleen returns, are we fucked? With the majority of the Disney Plus shows not really highly fan regarded and, let's just say it, pretty shit, there's only so many opportunities afforded and given to you to throw that Hail Mary pass and really rally your fandom. And an heir to the Empire Part 1 and Part 2, reintroducing the character of Ahsoka for the first time on the big screen, continuing a story that people can resonate with due to their past watch time, was exactly that Hail Mary pass. But instead, as always, when you needed them most, they vanished and fumbled the ball. <sighs> Alright, let's just get very candid here. Ahsoka was incredibly average. Not mid, but average. But more importantly, the show was bloated as hell. The plot and the narrative. In theory, we had something good going here. Imagine this. A story following the characters of Ahsoka and the characters of Rebels following Ahsoka on a mission having heard rumors about the return of Thrawn. An Imperial Vice Admiral from the Empire days who in a last ditch effort was banished to some faraway galaxy alongside their friend Ezra who sacrificed himself for the greater good like an actual Jedi. Following characters such as Morgan Nightsister who just want to rise in the ranks of power as well as see the restoration of her own planet of Dathomir. Balon Skull, a Jedi now missionary from the days of pre-Order 66, who is by far the most interesting character in the show and I imagine would definitely translate to a movie format. Shin, a plank with vanilla seasoning for the pessimists of the fandom. Or, a blank canvas plank for the opportunist. Thrawn, a badass and commanding leader who also happens to be a hand-to-hand -hand combat specialist. And oh right, Ahsoka all coming together in a two-part movie event not weighed down by the unnecessary and bloated fat needed to fill a seven-hour runtime for a TV show the writers obviously do not have the brain capacity for. Man, I can't believe that Dave Filoni was actually in the studio making this pitch, and none of the mind-numbing cacti in Avening the Office used a brain cell or two to think to themselves, uh, we should definitely make this a movie to save our asses. There's not really going to be another opportunity before we all get fired next year. The characters of Sabine and Thrawn could have really thrived in an environment that the big screen provides compared to the small. Two of the weakest characters in the show in its entirety, what the big screen provides as a whole is an opportunity for unwasted screen time and character development. Mostly, and sometimes exclusively, only focusing on who the character is in the present and who the character will become by the end. You can go check out my last video or the review of the show for a more in-depth breakdown on the structural problems I have with Thrawn and Sabine if you need more of an explanation to further my argument. But there's no denying the pre-existing relationship and fan investment the fandom had with the character of Ahsoka in the show of Star Wars Rebels the damnation that was the sequel trilogy, the lack of faith the studio has with their introduced Disney original characters, the bloated runtime of these Disney Plus shows, nonsensical character writing, wasted potential, missed opportunities of the show's post hindsight, and more importantly, the timing of it all to heave that Hail Mary pass to somehow, some way. Try to bring back more of that sweet, sweet collective generational fandom are some of the reasons why the Ahsoka show should have been a movie. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you're new to the channel, definitely go check out my review about Ahsoka as a whole. And this video will make a lot more sense. It's kind of like a two-parter, kind of, not really. But I do want to hear your thoughts on Ahsoka as a whole, and the idea of the concept of the Ahsoka show as a two-parter of the heir to the Empire. I just think it would have been better on the big screen, and it wouldn't have even had to been a trilogy. Just a part one and a part two could have really done the job.
I'm definitely down to hear what you guys think. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.